Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have 12 coastal wind chime DIY ideas for you using items from the Dollar Tree. So let's get started with some brand new DIYs. These are the new wind chimes they have at the Shore Living Line this year. My stores just put these out so they must have gotten these in a second shipment. I'm gonna need a lot of them because as you can see the driftwood only has like three little pieces. There's nothing to kind of clink together. So I actually kind of need a lot of these to combine together to make a bigger one. If you can't find it, you could always use the wood slices like this from the Dollar Tree, which we're gonna use later in this video, or even some of the wood stems or actual driftwood would work. But since I have these, and I kind of wanna use those great sand dollars and seashells on the top, for other DIYs, they're fantastic. Um, they're kind of like, I guess they're made out of a resin material, but they're kind of, uh, kind of a ceramic feel on these. And so what I'm gonna do is combine these together. So I'm gonna take one of these sand dollars, that's gonna be the top of my wind chime. And then I'm just going to take the little uh, driftwood pieces off of all the others. So what I wanna do is the sand dollar has four slots. So I'm gonna need a total of four short kind of pieces of driftwood with the three sets of driftwood on them like that. And then I want a longer piece for the middle of the uh, wind chime. So I'm gonna combine two more. So as you can see, I'm using quite a few of these. Um, I picked up all that I could find at the store. I was so excited I finally saw these. I had avoided buying a case of them because I online they didn't look that great, but in person they look fantastic. I don't know if the cases are still available online or not, but I might have to check it out. So I have a total of five here, or six actually, but I'm going to have five. I'm going to combine two together to make a long one if that makes sense. So I was trying to determine how long I want it to be. Instead of the three sets, I was trying to determine, and then I'm um, kind of moving the wood bead on here to kind of repeat the pattern before I tie these off. That way it kind of keeps that same pattern that's going. And I just tie the two sets together just like that. And then I don't know if I really need it to be that long. So I also want to put a sand dollar on the bottom of it. I thought that'd be really cute. So I shorten it to a total of five. I think that's plenty long for the middle of my wind chime. Now this is the sand dollar we're gonna use for the top. And since we're putting something in the middle, there's no hole in the middle of the sand dollar, we will have to drill a hole in that. And um, I'm gonna drill a hole so that I can um, string that middle one through it. So I'm just gonna use my drill and drill a hole in here. Now I didn't quite get it centered and that kind of caused me some issues with um, the way I was gonna hang it at first, you'll see. <laughs> So um, I'm just taking some Dollar Tree twine and I am going to take a piece, make a big like loop out of it. I was thinking I could make a hanger with this. I wanna hang the sand dollar upside down so that you can see it from the bottom since it's gonna be hanging up in the air. Um, so you'll see the pretty side of the sand dollar if that makes sense. So I just knotted that through to make a hanger and then we could always attach that longer piece later to that. So that was where, if I would have got that centered properly, it might have hung better, but I did have to change the way I hung it. Now it's time to attach these. So all I'm doing is using the existing twine. I was careful to untie them from the other one so I didn't really lose any length because um, it's really hard to tie these off if you don't have enough twine to work with. And I had just about enough twine to work with on these because I want to double tie them to make sure it's nice and strong. And as you can see, there's like four slots that are kind of like pretty close to equidistance on the sand dollar. So it made four perfect openings for these little driftwood pieces. 
So I just go ahead and tie those all on and using those pre-made wind chimes like that is going to save me a lot of time. Now the driftwood will all bounce off of each other on this and make kind of a clunking kind of like bamboo sound. So it is definitely going to make some noise. Now this is the middle piece right here that we made a little bit longer. And it's just a matter of attaching that to the hanger that we made. So just trying to make sure everything is in where it's supposed to be. And then I just tied that off to my hanger that I made, trimming off some of the excess twine, but not too short because I want my knot to hold. Then I told you I wanted to put a sand dollar at the bottom. So I'm using a Dollar Tree Shore Living sand dollar. And I'm just going to use like that slot that's on the sand dollar to tie that off. That's going to be, I think it's called the clapper on the wind chime. And I just tie that to the very bottom of the twine like that. So I try to hang it and it hangs all crazy because I didn't get the hole right in the center. So it's like just not perfect. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just knot that off and try a different approach for my hanger that I think will work better and that will keep everything level. So I have those four slots that we used for the four different pieces of driftwood. So I'm going to make a hanger that attaches to all of those. So I take some twine, tie it off on one side, and then tie it off on the opposite side to make a hanger going this direction, right? Probably, I, probably about nine inches is what I did. And I'm going to hang it from the rafters of my Florida room. And I think that will be a good distance. So then I tie it to the opposite one. And then I'm going to take it and actually tie it to the twine here, right here at the top. So it's kind of attached there too. And then tie it through my fourth and remain, remaining hole. And this hanger made it hang level and made it look so much better. So that's all there is to this little shore living um, wind chime. I think it turned out really cute. Let me give you kind of a close-up view of the sand dollar. We have the driftwood with the like natural wood beads, super cute. And then at the bottom for the clapper, a, another sand dollar, which works perfectly for this. And they're not real sand dollars, so it's not going to break or anything if it falls off outside in some of this Florida wind. But this is how it looks hanging in my Florida room. I was able to go two entire sides of my Florida room using all of my DIY wind chimes. What do you guys think about my sand dollar wind chime? I think it turned out really cute and it looks great right there. If you're enjoying today's video, don't forget to hit that like button. It always helps my videos with the algorithm. Okay, for the next one, we're going to use some of these little... Um, what are they called? Are they called wall charms? They're like wood beads that have the little um, ceramic shapes on them um, from the Shore Living Line and a bamboo ring. So I'm going to use the smaller one. I think that's going to be the perfect size for a wind chime. And I ordered a whole case of these and I love them so much that I ordered another case of them. And I even bought some in the store because I love the pieces on these. They're so cool. I've been using them for other Shore Living DIYs here on my channel. I want to make a um, wind chime that goes around and kind of cascades. So I want it to go from short to long. I'm going to use the existing wood beads on here because why not? I'm going to cut it a little longer than I want it though because I do need some twine to work with. And for the first set, I only included three beads. So two of the white, one of the natural, and I'm just tying that off to the bamboo ring. I found that I wasn't giving myself enough twine to work with on this one. I was trying to keep as many beads on the garland as I could, but I probably should have cut a little bit longer because it was a little difficult to tie some of these. So I'm using the same seashell in all of mine. Since I have a lot of them, I can totally do that. And I'm trying to remember exactly how many I used on this one. Okay, I just went and counted. I used a total of eight. Now, they don't all have to be the same one, but since I have eight of the seashells, I thought it would be great if they matched. So I cut this one a little longer, two beads longer. So instead of three beads, this one has five, right? And I tie that on there. I can always kind of scoot them around depending on how many I end up using. 
and I want it to look like a spiral going around. So I have three beads and then I have five beads on the next one. And I'm gonna continue that pattern by adding two beads to every one. So instead of five, we're doing seven on this one. So again, I'm just gonna snip it, trying to get better about giving myself a little bit more twine there to make it a little bit easier. And using the wood beads on this, I don't always use this many wood beads on a wind chime, but I really kind of like the way that it looked. It is really kind of elegant, but very coastal. So this one, I thought I cut it long enough and I didn't, but if you don't cut yours long enough, you can always tie some more twine on and use that to tie it off, which is what I ended up doing on that one. And um, I just want to continue that pattern all the way around. I think I had, I used eight, but I think I had like maybe 10 there. I just grabbed every single one that I had that was like the seashell one. And I haven't used the sea, well, I think I used the seashell one on one DIY so far. If you haven't seen my other shore living videos, please come check them out. I don't know what's going on this year, but my shore living content is just not cutting it like it normally does. This is usually my busiest time of year and I don't know if it's YouTube or Dollar Tree or what. <laughs> but that is my fourth one, so we're halfway around it. And luckily the wood bead garlands were long enough to continue this pattern that I've got going on. I think adding two beads to each one um, definitely gives it enough of a height change. And I'm trying to get better about leaving more twine on there because obviously important, especially when you're going to double tie it on there. Now, the shells are made out of like a resin material that feels like ceramic. Um, so they're kind of heavy. And I found that this wind chime was heavy. So I did have to make sure that I got everything tied on securely because I don't want them falling off. I think if they fell off in my Florida room onto the concrete, they might break because they do feel like ceramic. I'm not really sure exactly how Dollar Tree makes these, but they are beautiful. They have like a great detail on one side of the seashell. And they also have starfish, sea turtles. They're so cute. <laughs> I absolutely love them. And so just tying that one off and two longer and continuing that pattern all the way around. Um, I'm really not going to have to do much else to it. It's going to have all of the wood beads on it. It's going to have all of the seashells. And I like the fact that I left like the seashells, just the kind of unfinished white ceramic. I think it really kind of added to the charm. So really the only time consuming part of this was just cutting them, tying them on there. You don't have to string the beads or even tie the seashells on there. They're already on there. So now that I have them all on there, I think eight is plenty. Now I need to make a hanger. Again, I'm gonna use Dollar Tree twine. A lot of you guys have asked me where I got my twine holder. That is a yarn keeper and those are from Dollar Tree. I tried to pick up another one. I plan to do a giveaway here soon on my channel and I'm trying to pick up some of my favorite things like that because it makes working with Dollar Tree twine so easy and it keeps my twine clean because my work desk can get a little crazy with, you know, drilling and sawing and stuff like that. But as you can see, I'm making the hanger. I just tied it to one end, tied it to the other end, and then crisscrossing and tying it at the top. So just like that, it's gonna kind of have an X. And then this one is a little tricky because you want to make sure that it's gonna hang level. So before you double tie it, kind of check it, make sure that everything is hanging level. If it's not, you can always kind of readjust where your knot is. But there it is, our little spiral, like cascading um, wind chime with the wood beads and the seashells. And here's a little close up view of how it turned out. It's kind of hard to see the spiral shape if you're like this direction um, underneath of it since it's hanging up on my ceiling here in the Florida room. You can really see that fun spiral pattern that starts out short goes all the way around and ends in a long beaded garland. But it was really easy to put together. I like the natural wood colors of the bamboo ring 
and the wood beads and then the white beads really match well with the seashell so that's how it looks hanging in my florida room and look at my outdoor curtains there that is because of a squirrel <laughs> but i think that he's finally moved out now here is the next diy i wanted to use um i wanted to look like a coconut on the top of a wind chime and so i'm using one of the little summer coconut like bikini tops i guess um and i'm just going to use one of them i know it's like dark plastic and it doesn't look like a real coconut but it's got an interesting texture on it and i think i can probably make it look more like a real coconut with a little bit of paint I want to combine that with the new plastic seashells from the Dollar Tree, which are pretty unique, and see if I can make a wind chime out of those. So it's already got three holes that are kind of equal distance, so I put a fourth hole here on the other side. One side has two holes, um, the way it was strung. I'm just going to ignore one of those holes. So we have four equal distance holes. And now I'm going to drill one in the middle. The plastic is super easy to drill. And I don't want my holes to be too large because I want to be able to have put twine through there and be able to knot it off easily. Now these are the plastic seashells. They're colored really nice, um, but they're super easy to work with because they're made out of plastic. They're all kind of perfect. <laughs> I kind of like working with them. And they make a great clacking sound when the plastic all hits each other. I think it'll make another fun sound for a wind chime. Now let's work on making this coconut look a little bit better. I didn't really have the right color of brown, so I'm going to mix like some beige, some brown, some yellow together. I was trying to get like a warm brown color, and I never seem to have the right color of brown that I want. But what I want to do is take that texture that's on the little coconut and try to bring that out by adding different colors of brown. I want like three different colors of brown all mixed together. Try to make the coconut shell look more real. And it's definitely easier to work with one of these plastic ones than working with a real one that's going to have all the husk and everything like that. It's going to be thick. Um, so I really kind of like how it turned out. So as you can see, I just went over it with that kind of tannish color that I mixed up. Then it made a little bit warmer and you're going to be able to see the inside of the coconut too from the ground right so i'm going to have to paint that as well so i just did a thin coat of paint all the way around on both sides i'm going to touch that up a little bit right there and then i do want some of that original dark color that was on there to show through so after i got that dry i just lightly went over it with a baby wipe distressing it slightly, letting that some of that dark show through to give us a dark brown color. And then I have kind of more of a chocolate brown. And I just use one of those like chunky brushes and I just go over and kind of just dabble, you know, daub that color, you know, all over um, evenly. But I want all of the colors to kind of show through if that makes sense. So I just make sure that I kind of get the whole surface covered just with a little bit of distress and it really makes it look varied and it gave the coconut so much more personality. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the coconut because you're going to be able to see that again. So on this one I just went all over it with that chocolate um, brown color first and then I'm going to go in and distress it with a baby wipe to kind of remove some of the paint while I'm at it to bring in that dark shade of brown and I really like how it turned out. It turned out way better than I thought it was going to when I started. I thought I, it was really going to look plasticky and like a toy, but it actually turned out really pretty. So I think that looks way better than it did before. And it does have a good texture on it. So I think that it will be fine. So just touching it up till I am happy with it. This is how it looks. And then these are the plastic seashells that I want to hang. I want to have five um, lengths of twine with the um, seashells on them. Now you could drill holes in these. I didn't have like a drill bit or a way to drill them that was small enough. Um, so we're actually just going to hot glue them on. They're plastic and I've hot glued other wind chimes. and They've actually held together really well. I do use Gorilla Glue hot glue so that could help. Now I have all of these extra um, wood beads from the wood bead garlands that we took apart. So we might as well use some of those in some of these other wind chimes today. I was going to add blue, but I decided not to. 
So this is going to be the very bottom of one of the strands of the wind chime. And as you can see, I just took some twine and glued it right there. I'm going to have the shells like hanging, I guess, kind of upside down. I always kind of hang them that way with my wind chimes. I think they look better that way. And then I measured with my little square here from the Dollar Tree. A ruler is kind of important for this one. I did about two inches. I tied a knot and then I'm going to put a wood bead there. Now the reason I had to tie a knot is because this twine is really thin. If you're using a thicker twine, you can kind of just get away with that. Um, the wood beads will kind of stay in place wherever you want them by sliding them. But since this is thin, I did have to tie a knot. So then I'm going to try to evenly space out the next seashell. Again, hot gluing that to the inside of the shell. And then pull that down, measure two inches, do another knot. So this part was a little time consuming doing the measuring and trying to make sure that everything was equal um, spacing, but it's actually really important to how the wind chime turns out. So I'm repeating that pattern going all the way up. For all of the outside um, strands of the wind chime, we are gonna have three um, seashells and wood beads in combination. I think that is going to be plenty long. So let's go ahead and tie it off. I'm going to go ahead and put it through one of the holes on our coconut shell. I do want it to hang down slightly like uh, about four inches or so. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that too. Might as well since I have the ruler here and then just double knot that leaving the excess twine on there that I purposely made really long so that I could reuse that for a hanger. So I won't have to tie anything else off on there. So I'm going to cut another long strand and we can start working on our next one. So again, we're just doing three of the plastic seashells, three of the wood beads, and then I will make the fifth strand in the middle longer. Kind of makes sense for the wind chime. So again, lots of measuring, gluing, and tying. So this one was a little bit more time consuming. If you were to drill a hole in your shells, um, that's gonna take even more time. So take that into consideration when you're trying to decide whether you want to hot glue yours, if you want to drill a hole in them and tie them off. I, you know, drilling a hole in them is going to make it more secure. So that's another consideration, but I think that this will work pretty well. The um, hot glue seems to stay on these pretty good. So here's my second strand. I'm going to try to make sure that it is hanging equally to the one right next to it and tying that off. Now, I'm going to speed this way up because, again, this part is a little time consuming because you're doing the same thing over and over. So we're just going to tie another strand here. And this one I'm actually making for the middle. So instead of three, I'm actually going to do four of the seashells. And I actually forget <laughs> after I get them all on there that it was for the middle and I accidentally tied it on right there. But I will notice in a minute and untie it. <laughs> but as you can see, I'm leaving a lot of extra twine on there to be left over for the hanger. So I'm gonna do another strand of three here with the seashells. Again, just repeating that same pattern, gluing it to the bottom, two inches, a knot, a wood bead two inches, you know, working my way all the way up. I guess it's actually like three inches between the wood bead and the top of the next seashell. That's when I realized, hey, this one was supposed to be for the middle. I don't know why I tied it on. I'm gonna tie that on last just to make that easier. I'm gonna put that out of the way so I don't make that mistake again. And we're gonna tie on our third strand here. Again, trying to make sure that it is equal distance and double knotting it to make sure it's good and secure. And I really like the fact that I painted that coconut. I think it made it turn out, it turned out so much better. Now this is the fourth and final strand. So we're just going to glue a knot, wood bead, and I'm using the white wood beads that was left over from the wood bead garland. Um, I try to reuse whatever, you know, extra craft supplies I have. Now on this fourth one, there's two holes, but there's one that's kind of even with the one across from it. So that is the one I'm choosing to knot this off on, just like that. 
Now, remember that la that strand for the middle that I actually forgot <laughs> and put the wrong place? Now I'm going to attach it here. I just have to string it through that hole that I put on the top of it. And I was gonna put a clapper on the end of it, but I don't think it really needs it. All these plastic seashells clank off each other pretty nicely. And I just feed that through and double knot that. And um, then I just cut off the excess twine. Because remember, we left all the extra twine on here to make a built-in hanger. So I gather all four pieces of twine, um, try to bring them together at an equal distance. And then once I get them all grouped together like that, I can just knot them forming a perfect hanger for a little coconut and seashell wind chimes. This is how it turned out. Let me give you a close up view of it. There's the little coconut um, from the summer section at Dollar Tree and the plastic seashells are new. They're with the regular seashells and my store was actually surprised. They thought that they were real and they were gonna wrap them up for me because I thought they were fragile, but I was like, hey, they're plastic. They don't say they're plastic. So when you're grabbing seashells from the Dollar Tree, make sure you look. But I think it turned out well. It's kind of hard to see here. It was kind of dusk when I was taking this picture, um, but this is how the seashells look hanging in my Florida room. I went every other rafter on one side of my Florida room with these, but that's a little bit better view. Okay, for the next wind chime, we're gonna use one of the wood, one of the rope words. This one says beach from the Dollar Tree. It's on a sign. These are from the Shore Living Line and five of the wall charms. I chose three of the seashells and two of the anchors. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the tassels off of them. I don't think they really look good for a wind chime with the tassels on them. So what I do is just cut that twine long enough, pull out the staple, and then just tie the twine here to secure it on the other staple, and but leave the hanger on there because I can use that to hang that from the beach sign. These are made out of like a resin material, but they feel like wood. Um, so they're probably like some kind of fake wood. <laughs> I really don't know how Dollar Tree makes these cute things, but look how cute they are. They look like white distressed wood and that's perfect for the coastal feel. So I'm gonna do a total of five. I always like to work with odd numbers. There's five letters in beach. I can tie one of these to each one of the letters and they'll overlap slightly. I'm gonna do them at slightly different um, depths. That way um, the anchor will hit against the shells. When they hit together, they kind of sound, sound like bamboo because they're kind of like a wood-like material. So I went ahead and cut the tassel off all five, shortened those, removed the staples because they will turn around in the wind um, as well when we hang it. Now I thought we could add a little bit of color to these. They already have like natural wood beads on them, but I think they have room for one more. So I'm gonna use some of these wood beads um, from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use like this beautiful like aqua color and just slide another wood bead on them. For some reason, the two wood beads they have on them are kind of glued together, which is kind of weird, um, but we'll go with it. And trying to figure out how I'm gonna attach these. So the two anchors are gonna go on the E and the C. And I want them to hang a little bit lower then the seashells, um, I'm gonna have the seashells hang higher. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the twine like that, use my staple gun and staple um, that onto the bottom of my E and then the seashells I will attach to the top of the letters, if that makes sense to make them different lengths since I don't have a lot of twine to work with. Again, I just cut the twine like that, use my staple gun to get at least one of the twines in there and um, then tie it off. I often miss with my stapler because I can't really see without blocking the camera. <laughs> and I don't wanna do that to y'all. You guys don't wanna look on the top of my head. So there is our two anchors. They look really cute with a little blue bead on them. And then we can start working with the seashells. So as you can see, they're gonna be really close together, which is gonna help them overlap, help them make noise as a wind chime. So I add a blue bead and I told you for this row, we're gonna attach them to the top of the letters. I thought maybe I could see a little bit better if I turn it sideways. So again, I'm gonna staple that to the top of the back of the letter. 
that's like an MDF material. It's kind of like a fake wood. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here with the letter A, attaching a blue bead and stapling that to the top of the letter. I'm not really um, tying these because I don't have any twine left over, but I do make sure my staples are in all the way to hang those up. And our final letter B is gonna have another seashell. So I add a blue bead and I'm glad I added those blue beads. It did give it a little touch of color. Um, the B is a big letter, so I kind of do it to the middle of the letter, which would make it the same as the A and the H. And then I'm going to make a hanger using the existing hanger that's already on there. I might as well, right? I just tie some twine off and oh, well, we, let's add some blue beads up here too, just to add a little color here. I've got some extra. So I add two to one side, two to the other side. And before I tie that off, and that made a little bit of color and fun to the hanger of this wind chime as well. I tie it on that side, trim it off. And then the only thing I didn't like was that the twine coming down in the middle of the A, I thought that made it slightly harder to read. So what I'm gonna do is just staple it to the bottom of the letter and trim off some of that excess twine here. This is just me being extra. I had some left left over twine at that point, so I could tie that off to make it even sturdier, but so easy. A little beach sign. Um, it's got the rope, super coastal. It's got those little touches of blue. It's an interesting wind chime in that it's kind of flat. You can have it kind of face one direction where you can read it. And as you can see, the anchors and the seashells overlap just enough that they'll be kind of clunking up against each other if you want your wind chime to make some noise. Now, this is how it looks hanging up in my Florida room. As you can see, it is night out. <laughs> I was trying to get these pictures taken before it got dark tonight because it makes it so much harder to take good pictures outside. But we managed. So that's how it looks, our little beach anchor and seashell wind chime. Okay, for the next one, we're going to try some of these new wind chimes they have at the Shore Living Line. And again, I'm going to use a bamboo ring from the Dollar Tree, one of the smaller ones. And I picked up one each of the wind chimes. So as you can see, there is all different animals. There's a lobster, a crab, and a mermaid tail on this one. Has a great little bell that rings on the bottom. And then this one has a seashell, a seahorse, a starfish. And the last one has a sea turtle, a whale, and a pelican. Now, the reason I went ahead and took everything apart is because I want to stain these. And I thought it would be way too messy to try to stain those with the twine and everything still attached. So I'm going to lay them all out, all nine pieces. And if you can't find three separate ones, you could always repeat shapes. But they're pretty big and this is going to make a nice wind chime. Not only is the wood going to make noise, um, the bells on there are going to make noise too. Now I want to stain them but not too dark. So how I did that was I took water and a little bit of antique wax by Waverly to make a very thin light stain. And then I'm just going over that wood. As you can see, whenever you stain this Dollar Tree wood, it turns out really pretty. It picks up like that wood grain. Now, I did have quite a bit of water in mine. The first one stained um, exactly kind of like how I wanted, but as I was going, I was finding that it wasn't really staining as much as, as dark as I wanted. So I'm gonna add a little bit more Antique Wax by Waverly to my water to make it a little bit darker and um, go over those to see if we can get a little bit more color because they just seemed like they weren't quite even and kind of go over some of the ones that were a little bit lighter. And the pelican looks fine. And I'm going over, and I want to stain both sides of these. And I'm so glad that I decided to stain them because I think staining them is way easier than painting them actually. Because the Antique Wax by Waverly, you don't have to worry about it like a regular stain. It's super fast to dry. So let's go ahead and flip these over. And um, I want to act quickly for this so that I can stain the back and any of the drips that I had there from the back um, aren't going to have a chance to dry before I can get the side stained as well. So again, I'm going over all the shapes. I am going to stain the bamboo ring for the top too to kind of give it all that same color. I didn't 
I didn't know I was going to stain these at first, but I'm so glad I did because look at that beautiful like wood grain in some of those, like the whale and stuff like that. And I love all the sea creature shapes, super coastal and fun. Now I'm going to kind of um, start to dry these off on paper towels there. That way I don't have any drips on the back that's going to stain a little bit darker. So as you can see, I'm just taking paper towels and kind of putting one in between each one. And then I told you we were going to stain this. Bamboo doesn't stain super well, but I can give it kind of a light stain um, so it'll coordinate a little bit better with the um, sea creatures. Now it's time to start building. So I cut off some Dollar Tree twine. I had some cotton twine I thought about using for some of these, but I really like using the brown twine from the Dollar Tree because being outside, it's not going to get dirty or show dirt. So I'm going to string just one of the natural wood beads. We have those left over from those wood bead garlands as well. And so I do a wood bead, a pelican, a wood bead, um, a starfish. The great thing about these is that since they were already kind of wind chimes, they are, they have the holes perfectly drilled. I'm going to try to keep the same pattern if I can remember it. I think I can try to keep everything in order. And then um, here at the bottom, I'm going to tie on the bell for this part of it and just double knot that. And I left enough twine on there um, to um, tie that off to the top of it and still have enough left over for the hanger as well. So I'm gonna repeat the same pattern. Um, long piece of twine, um, natural wood bead. I like the contrast between the stain that we did on the sea creatures and the natural wood beads. Uh, the seahorse shape. Another wood bead, and we'll finish it off here with a mermaid tail. Not having to drill those holes and stuff just makes it so much quicker. Another bell here for the bottom of this one. And this one's only going to have three pieces. These are kind of big, so I think that's going to be fine. And they can kind of all clunk together, but they can also ring with the bell on these. And for our third and final one, I cut another piece of twine. And we're going to repeat that natural wood bead um, sea creature pattern. First with a sea turtle. Next up, a seashell. And finally, to finish it off with this cute little crab. Last bell to attach. Tying that off. And now we can start putting this together. So what I'm going to do is just tie this here to the bamboo ring. Again, leaving enough twine for the hanger. So I double knot it on there. And I'm going to repeat that all the way around, just going about a third of the way around, tying this one off. Double tying it is definitely key here. And as you can see, that very light stain kind of gave them like a little bit of a driftwood effect, which was my goal there when staining them. Now I can gather all three together here at the top and tie that off to make a hanger for this super simple coastal wind chime. Get a knot it, tie off or cut off the extra twine, and this one is ready to go. I'm gonna make sure that it's hanging evenly. I thought maybe a little hot glue to keep these in place and keep them from sliding around is gonna make this hang more level. That way it's gonna be equally weighted. And so I just hot glue the twine to the bamboo ring like that, and I think that really helps. Let me show you here inside how this wind chime looks. As you can see, the wood beads I did not tie knot, so they kind of fall down a little bit because my twine is thin, but I still think it looks cute. And um, all of the sea creatures, the little bells there on the bottom, and this is how it looks hanging in my Florida room. I was having a hard time taking a picture of this, I had to stand on my table outside to take a picture of this. You guys see what I do for y'all? Um, <laughs> but I was trying not to fall off the table and trying to get the sea creatures to turn so that I could see them. And I was like, ah, I give up. <laughs> but I tied it up in my Florida room. I think it looks fun. 
Hey guys, have you visited my new website yet? It's craftybeach.net. It's going to be your one-stop shop. Whenever I post a video, I'm going to make a blog post on here. So when you visit, you're going to see like my most recent content. When I recorded this, it was Easter. And I click on it. If you go down, you're going to see a picture of all my DIYs that you can pin on Pinterest. So you can remember to go back and make that DIY. If you go down, you can find the corresponding YouTube video with the directions for how to make it. I'm going to have everything by season. I just started at Easter. So right now I have Easter, spring, and coastal. I even have a link to my Amazon store. So you can see the items that I recommend in my videos. And there's even a link to my Etsy shop. If you want to get some of my fun crafting memes or printables, it is right there with for you. So remember craftybeach.net is my new website and I'm super excited about it. So come check it out. Okay, on the next set of coastal wind chime DIYs, I'm going to show you some of the coastal wind chimes that I made last year here on my channel. They are super cute to give you some more wind chime crafting inspiration. For the first one, we're going to be doing a starfish. It's kind of more of a wall hanging, but I guess if you did more than one, um, you can make it make noise, kind of clacking together outside. But it's kind of decorative. I'm going to use some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And this is the nice thick one. First, I'm gonna loop it like that. We're gonna make a handle. Now, it looks like I'm just tying it, you know, an overhand knot, but watch what I do. I only bring it through one of the loops instead of two to kind of create like a cool knot there that can work as a hanger for this little wind chime. I just wanted something that kind of looked a little bit like a coastal knot up top, but it's also going to serve the purpose of a hanger. And these wind chimes, a lot of them can be used indoors or outdoors. I'm going to be using this one indoors. I have the perfect spot for this in my dining room. Now what I wanted to do was do a starfish wind chime by hanging starfish on there. Now, this is what it looks like with the starfish from the Dollar Tree. I wasn't a huge fan of those, but there's also some other starfish they had this year from the Shore Living Line, these larger ones, and I thought maybe we should try it with those. Now, the only three I have left of these are the red ones. I think these were kind of the last to go at my store. Um, but they do also have these in like white and light blue. And so I don't really want mine to be red, but that's okay because we can always just paint these. So I'm going to use three of them. I think that's going to be plenty long enough. This is going to provide just like a skinny wall hanging in my dining room, but you can also use this as a wind chime outside. Now the rope is kind of stapled seriously on the back of these. These little starfish from the Dollar Tree are made out of wood. And so I thought we needed to start painting these. I'm gonna go ahead and start painting on the bottom just so it's not real noticeable that these are red. Um, if you're gonna hang this um, somewhere where you're gonna be able to see it from behind. So I'm just gonna do just a single coat of white on the back just to freshen those up and kind of get rid of that red. No big deal. Then we're gonna flip them over and I wanna change these. You could leave them white, but I wanted these to be blue. And I wanted these to be like a really fun beachy blue that's gonna look great with a coastal theme. So just going all over the red starfish with just some white acrylic paint. And we are covering red, so it is gonna take a little bit, um, a couple coats to cover that red um, before we can kind of do the color that we wanna do on these. And this was a really easy wind chime. I spent most of my time just painting these little starfish. So you can see the coverage that one coat gave me. It wasn't great. I thought it was still gonna shine through if I tried to paint them blue, so. I'm gonna go in and give it a second coat and that totally worked. Now, if you're lucky enough to still have some like light blue ones, or if you have some that fit your color scheme, I think even the white ones will look good on their own. But I'm gonna mix Caribbean blue and um, white together to give me that really soft beachy blue. I love the shade of blue, it's really soft. And then we're just gonna go over all of the newly painted white parts 
and see how good those look. If I would have tried to paint just directly on the red, it would have taken so many coats to get that covered. So definitely go white if you have some of the red ones for sure. I bought the red ones because I thought maybe I would do something with them for the 4th of July. But what I'm realizing is that I probably did not buy enough of these because I've used these for several DIYs and I think these are my last three. I really wish um, that the stores, the Dollar Tree stores, would have ordered more. It seems like, you know, they should be prepared. You knew how popular this line was going to be, right? So now it's time to attach them to our rope. So it's going to be like, you know, a vertical hanging with that not being the top. And so I just want little starfish to be going down the front of this. I did notice that my paint wasn't completely dry on the back. So just cleaning that up a little bit so I don't get any paint on my white rope. And simple, we're just gonna use hot glue to attach this to the rope. Easy peasy, just working our way down. I just do a glue on one ray and kind of in the middle and just down a little bit on the rope. I want this to be fairly long. So then we are gonna space these out along the wind chime. I do use my tape measure so that I can make sure that there's like an equal distance between them. And I thought like six inches would be great. So we're just gonna add our second starfish here. And I'm really glad I decided to paint these blue. I think they're so pretty. At first I was just gonna like paint them ivory or kind of try to make them look more realistic, but I always love a good pop of blue. So one more time, six inches, and then we can finish up the bottom of this. Wall hanging, and it's gonna be really easy too. So the top was just that simple knot that we did and on the bottom, it's going to be kind of even easier. What I'm going to do, trying to get it all in shot so you can see the whole thing, is I am just going to simply tie a knot to tie off the bottom of this. And just kind of pull that tight right where I want it. And then I'm going to go in and cut off like a little tail here unwinding the three different strands of rope there at the bottom. Now I kind of want to make it look like macrame, you know, where it's like all open strings at the bottom. I thought that'd be a nice texture. So I am just using like a hair comb and combing this out. It did take a little bit of effort to get that all to look like one big package of rope strings and not like individual strands. So I keep combing it until it looks good. And then I give it another haircut because it's a little shaggy at that point, just kind of straightening it all out and neatening it up. And basically that's all there is to this wind chime. It was super easy. And this is where I'm hanging it in my home. I have a really skinny wall here in my dining room on the side of my curtains that just needed something beachy and blue. And I think this is the perfect thing. This would be super cute too. Hanging outside is a wind chime. And like I said, you'd probably have to hang it near other ones to get it to make like noise because you know the starfish could bounce off of each other. But I like it as a decorative wall hanging as well. Okay, our next DIY, we're going to use some nine and a half foot rope from the Dollar Tree, this brown rope. And what we're going to do is make sea chimes. This turned out magnificent. So basically I took that rope to my window in my kitchen, which is a rather big window, um, and kind of tied like a loop in one end here to go on my curtain holder, and then kind of tentatively tied off another one, like the width of my window. So it was important to measure that first so I know exactly how long to make these sea chimes. These are so cute. You can kind of use whatever you've got. The great thing about these is you hang these wind chimes inside your house. And whenever, whenever you open the window, you're going to get that beautiful um, sound of the wind chimes. So we're going to use just Dollar Tree jute twine to attach everything. And you can kind of see what I've picked out. 
I'm not going to use all of that, but I found some seashells, some from the Dollar Tree, some from the beach. Um, the white starfish are from Dollar Tree. And in the bag there, I have some capi shells, and I will show you um, where I got those as well. They're so pretty, and they sound beautiful as a wind chime. So I just attach it with a little bit of hot glue on one of the rays of the starfish and just wrap that around the top to give it that traditional like tied off starfish look like that and then cut off the excess twine. Now I wanted an odd number on the starfish so I thought seven would be enough because again this is going to be a rather big sea chime. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing to seven of those little white starfish from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. Those come three to a package and hopefully you were able to find some. I found that they were very hit or miss this year for me. If I found some, I only found like one or two packages at a time. I think they went really fast. I know that you could order them online, but I'm not sure if they still have them. I think I still have a lot from last year, but I might need to check my inventory on these as well. These are great for crafting. I'm just leaving these white. I think that's gonna be perfect. So as you can see, I'm just gluing to the back, wrapping it around, and then cutting all of the twine the same length as the others. So these will all hang evenly. And then I'm gonna spread all seven of the starfish out on these little sea chimes on that rope that we made. And then I'm gonna fill in all the other areas with seashells and capi shells. And it turned out so fun. Okay, so seashells, I picked out some of my favorite colorful ones that I could find. I think I'm gonna use four of like the scallop shells and then four of like a more traditional like seashell. Um, I think that's gonna be enough because I wanna do one on each side of the starfish and we had seven starfish. And so I'm gonna need eight seashells. And I kinda wanna alternate, I think the different kinds of shells. And I'm just using hot glue and just hot gluing that to the back. This is gonna be an indoor DIY for me. So I think the hot glue is gonna hold up. If you wanted to make these sea chimes for outside, you might be able to drill holes in your shells. I've seen that people do it. I've never actually attempted to do it. So I don't know how hard it is. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna make these a little bit shorter and I'm just gluing that to the back, cutting them all off the same length, easy peasy. And I tried to pick out some different colors. This is the other shape of shell I was talking about. I'm gonna kind of alternate that scallop shell at first with this one. And I'm not gonna use all the shells I have laid out there. Actually, eight of these was definitely enough. And then the last thing we're gonna add to this is the capi shells. They are beautiful and I ordered those on Amazon. I will show you how you can get some of those yourself. And they make this beautiful clinking sound when my window is open. I think these are gonna be so fun. So this is what they look like. They're very thin shells and they cut them like this. And the great thing is they already have holes in them and everything. And let me show you, I did add them here to my Amazon shop, which is linked below under beach crafting supplies. You can find them right here and they're only $15.99 um, with free shipping and you get like 60 of them. So I use those for several projects today. Um, but I still have a ton of them left. So I love these. This is the first time I've crafted with these. They are so pretty. And I think that they're going to look great hanging in front of my window in my kitchen. Um, because they have that like iridescent sheen. They're a little bit see-through. And so I'm just taking fishing line and tying that off. Can't use twine on these, I don't think, because the holes are too um, small. So I want these to be the longest um, thing hanging from our sea chime. And these make all of the beautiful clanking music when you have your window open. So I want a lot of these. Now I calculated, I did seven starfish and I did eight seashells. I thought we would do one of these little capi shells 
between every starfish and shell. So I think we're going to need, I think I did 14 of the cat pea shells. So again, I'm just stringing them with fishing line that I stole from my husband, don't tell him. And I tie that off with a double knot so it stays on there. Super easy. These have like holes drilled in the top and the bottom of them. And we are going to use these for another wind chime today. I loved how they turned out on this one so much that I had to use them again but I have a spin on them on my other one. So you'll have to stick around to find out what we did with these. But that the second bottom hole is only if you're really stringing it on something. So yeah, just tying the top one off. So this was a little time consuming putting together these sea chimes, but I cannot believe how beautiful they turned out. I have bought something similar, um, probably not as complex, but for my Christmas tree, because I have like a coastal Christmas tree, and I remember it costing a lot of money. So this is just an inexpensive way of doing your own. Um, everything came from the Dollar Tree except for these cat pea shells. And maybe a couple of the seashells. I use a lot of Dollar Tree seashells. So I just keep stringing them until I have enough. Uh, again, I think I'm going to use a 14 of the cat pea shells and we're just going to tie that on the rope as well. All the items are going to be tied at the top. And so they'll be a little bit flexible, like you can move them around if you don't get your spacing right. But I'm going to try to space this as good as I can. So kind of have all of the groups that we need for the, the sea chimes now. Just kind of want to find the middle of the rope and we're going to have a starfish tied in the middle of the rope here. So I tied it off with the existing length that I had and then I kind of looked at it and it looks way too long. So I'm thinking we need to shorten this, right? So I kind of see what looks better to me. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut all of the starfish at the same time so that they'll all be the correct length now. Just taking off like three inches or so, so they won't be dangling down quite as much. So again, I just gotta find the center of my rope and now we can start tying these on. I just tie the twine around the rope. For the starfish, I do tie them twice. Um, probably, don't need to. I didn't do that on the seashells. These aren't very heavy, but I just kind of wanted to make sure they were secure. So then I need another three of the starfish on this side. So I'm going to kind of see about how far apart. It looks like they're going to be a little over like um, seven inches apart. And then we're just going to tie these every seven inches on our sea chimes. I never knew these had a name, um, but there are so many things you can do with these. You can use starfish, you can use your seashell collection. I always need um, something to craft with my seashells because I have way too many. Now for the other half of the sea chimes, we're going to do the same thing, about a little over seven inches, and we're going to tie three more starfish over here. Kind of wanted the starfish to kind of be the base. That's kind of what we started with. And then we can kind of build the sea chimes around this. And it's an interesting take on the wind chime, having it be like a horizontal wind chime. And it's purposely meant to go in front of a window that you can open. Okay, time for the seashells. Um, again, I'm going to sort mine into like the kind of shell they are like scallop and this other kind of seashell like this and kind of alternate it for a little bit of variety and then I noticed I think I made those a little too long too which is okay I'm just going to take all of the shells and trim them off as well so they'll be a little bit shorter now on these I just tied them once um, around the twine and they totally stayed just fine I don't think that's going to go anywhere. 
And oh, I, these look so pretty during the daytime. Unfortunately, when I was taking pictures tonight, it was dark outside, so you're not going to get the full effect. But I'll try to brighten it up as much as I can because these look so pretty during the daytime in my kitchen. I kind of have like a mint green curtain in my kitchen, and these look so beautiful hanging in front of it. And of course, my kitchen's coastal, right? So these are fit in perfectly. And so I'm just going to keep alternating like... One scallop shell, one regular shell, halfway in between my little starfish until we fill it all up with eight seashells. And then we can go back in and fill in the rest of this with those beautiful cat pea shells. I looked those shells up. They're um, actually that cool of shells. They do kind of... Um, cut them and put the holes in them to make them easier to craft with. They're just so beautiful. I've never seen another shell like them. So just kind of figuring out how far I want these to hang down. I want them to hang down a little bit lower than everything else, but not too low. But enough to make everything jingle, right? And I think that looks like a good length. The fishing line's a little bit different, so you do kind of have to double tie that around to make sure that it stays in place. But I'm going to try to dangle those all down at about the same height. And I don't do, I'm going to go in and double tie that one to make sure it stays secure. I don't do one on the outside of the shells, that's why I only needed 14 of these. But I'm just going to do one between every shell and starfish. And I'm so glad I ordered these on Amazon and decided to add these to it. I saw so many coastal wind chimes done with these and I was really curious about them. And again, you get like 60 of them for $16. So they're not too expensive and they're super fun to craft with. I It's a bonus that they do already have the holes in them. That's one less step than if you had to try to drill the holes in them or hot glue them on there. Um, I think they look a little bit better hanging on the fishing line. And we are just going to keep going between every starfish and seashell all the way down until we hang all 14 of these beautiful capi shells. And again, they do make a lovely sound hanging um, on the wind chime. So I'm definitely going to have to open my windows to let these ring. And this is how it looks in my kitchen. I have a really kind of large window above my kitchen sink. And this is it. Again, I was kind of taking the picture at night. So you're not going to get the full effect, but it's even more stunning during the daytime. And I really hope you like that one. Okay, this next wind chime, super easy. I'm just going to take two pieces of driftwood that I found at the beach and crisscross these. And we're going to make the top of like a wind chime, like a mobile um, hanging down with like a T structure at the top. But we're going to just use some driftwood. If you don't have any driftwood, you could always use any kind of old rugged stick that you can find. I'm um, just Look for two that are about the same size. These are about the same length and about the same width. I put a dot of hot glue to start securing them together, but then I just start um, tying some Dollar Tree twine around it just to kind of bundle them together and kind of make that sturdy. And try to kind of make it even too. And again, I just flip it over and tie it off again. And this is going to look really great out on my back porch with my coastal like Florida room back there. I think it's going to be great. So what I did was I just made that string longer in the middle because we are going to need that for our mobile. And then I just cut off another piece of twine and kind of looped it at one end. And then we're going to tie that around here too, just for more reinforcement. This is also going to act as the hanger for our wind chime. Just a big loop hanger at the top. And then we already have our first string hanging down the middle from the string that we use to tie it together. So now I'm just going to need four more pieces of twine. One to come down each tip of the driftwood 
And I want to make those shorter than the one I did in the middle. The one in the middle is going to be the one that makes everything jingle and jangle. <laughs> and so I'm just going to cut down four pieces of twine a little bit shorter. Now, I am going to use hot glue on my seashells. I don't know how well that's going to hold up outside. I did not really want to try to drill my shells. I didn't want them to break. Um, so we will see how this holds up. I hope it holds up. So what I did was I just picked out some of my favorite seashells. Some of these are from the beach. Some of these are from like Dollar Tree. I think some of these are even from Dollar General, the shiny ones maybe. <laughs> but I tried to find like twinsies. So I found these two shells at the beach and they look kind of similar. So I just hot glue as much twine on the back of those as I can um, to try to make it more secure. And I think that's going to work. So that's going to be the end. I'm going to do kind of like two that are similar and then to another two that are similar and then alternate those on each side of the driftwood. And so this one, I'm going to find um, another little scallop shell that looks like that one about the same size, just kind of looking for similar shells. And glue that one on the bottom of that one. And then I'm just going to kind of work my way up. I just want to kind of alternate shells. I want different kinds of shells, different colors of shells next to each other. But again, I am kind of doing twinsies here on these and just hot gluing those. And as you notice, I'm hot gluing them all along the back of the shells to see if that will make it a little bit sturdy. I think these will hold up. But if you wanted to make yours stronger, you could use a different kind of glue um, like E6000 or you could try drilling holes into your shells. I know that you can do it. I just don't know if I have the right kind of drill bit and stuff for that. I would think you would want a rather small hole if you were to do that. And you might have to use fishing line in that case. But again, just looking for different sizes and shapes, one pair at a time. And I think we'll have room for about four seashells on each one of these for the sides of our little wind chime. These black ones I got in Sanibel last summer when we went there. I really miss going there and it's just such a shame. My favorite places are not there anymore and I don't think I can take going over there for quite a while. I know they're going to have to do a lot of rebuilding. They had so much damage from the hurricane. But I have a fun little memory. I have some great seashells from there. And then I just keep working my way up until it is completely full. And then I'm going to also need to attach shells to the middle um, string that we left on the mobile. And those can kind of be a variety of anything, but just wanted to show you how those look. I love the variety and I try to pick out colorful ones that look really cool. So here is our little wind chime. We also need to hang shells on this one. I thought we would do like a nice large one at the bottom to make these jingle. Something large to blow and I kind of had a bigger seashell that I just glued to the bottom. And then I'm just going to kind of use just whatever I have left kind of random here to go up the middle. And again, just hot gluing those on. This one was really easy to put together and it just looks so cute. And again, just trying to hot glue it to the shell as much as I can, like the length of the shell, just to make it a little bit stronger. going to flip this one around so it kind of is the same as the other ones. And now it's just a point of putting it together. So again, I'm going to do the twinsies on each end of the same piece of driftwood, kind of alternating against each other. And I did not leave myself a lot of twine here left for tying. You might want to leave yourself a little bit more because it was a little tight trying to get around here. This driftwood is still kind of sandy, like I think straight from the beach, <laughs> but that's okay because I'm going to hang this outside, so I don't really care. 
But sometimes the driftwood can be really hard to clean up. Like the sand just keeps coming out of it and keeps coming out of it. And then our final two, I'm going to tie those on opposite ends as well. Just double knot knotting the twine on there. And this one I really didn't give myself enough room. So um, if you do that too, this is how I fixed it. I just tied on a little bit more twine. No big deal. Then I'm going to use a little hot glue also to secure those so they don't fall off the edges. Just some hot glue on the top. It won't be real visible or anything like that. And then just trying to get rid of any hot glue strings that I might have from all of that hot gluing that I did for the shells. And we have a little wind chime. I think this is going to look so great hanging outside in my house. I just love all these seashells and it was so easy to make and really, um, I don't know if I spent anything on this. Maybe a couple of those seashells came from Dollar General. But this is how it looks kind of hanging from my coat tree here in my house. And then I'll try to kind of show it hanging um, a little bit. Again, dark when I was taking these pictures, so I can't really show you what it's going to look like out in my Florida room yet. But definitely going to hang these out there in the morning. And this is kind of how it looks dangling down. Just a super simple driftwood and seashell wind chime. I love the simplicity of this and it has held up really well for the past year. Everything is still glued on and hanging out in my Florida room. Okay, the next project, we're going to use some Dollar Tree sea glass. So we're going to make another wind chime. This one's going to be a sea glass wind chime. I'm also going to use driftwood that I found from the beach. And I'm going to start sorting out colors. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the colors. Um, that they have in this, but I think we're going to be able to make it work. The first package had lots of green, a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, and just a tiny bit of that like royal blue color, which I don't really want to use that one for this DIY, I don't think. So I think I'm just going to focus on green, um, the clear white, and the light blue on these. So it's going to take several packages of these and lots of sorting. Some of the pieces are really small. I'm trying to look for like some of the bigger pieces. And I kind of want to do an ombre effect. I thought that the bright blue was just a little too blue for this. And um, so I thought I could like transition colors from like green to that light blue to the white. And that royal blue is just going to like kind of mess up the whole thing. So we'll just save that for another DIY. So those are the colors I want to use. And I have my gnarly piece of driftwood that I think is going to be the perfect top for this little wind chime. Nice and gnarly. I come home from the beach constantly with that. There's a beach at my son um, where he volunteers. He volunteers at an aquarium. That's on a beach, and so whatever I drop him off, I'm always hunting for driftwood. <laughs> and I'm just going to use Dollar Tree twine. So I'm going to start by tying it off in the center and just knotting that down. That's going to be my longest piece. I want my center piece to be the longest. And I want to string the sea glass on this so they will all dangle down. Now this is going to be kind of a flat wind chime so you could totally hang this as wall decor or you can hang this as a wind chime. It's completely up to you. It's going to look beautiful either way. I can't wait to see what this looks like outside with the sun shining on it. The two end pieces that I'm tying on, I want to be the shortest pieces. And then I'm going to tie a piece in between each side. And that one's going to be a little bit in between. So it's going to be like getting longer, longest in the middle, shortest on the sides. And again, just knotting that at the top and cutting those off. So I have a total of five strands that I want to string the sea glass on. Now, a lot of times with sea glass, you can wire it on by using wire. 
And if you're going to use it outside and you're worried about them staying on, that might be a good strategy or maybe using some extra strong glue. But I'm going to use hot glue on mine for the sake of time. And so far, so good. It has held up. I'm not sure if I'm going to put this one inside or outside. I think maybe outside just because I think it's going to look really pretty out there. Now I glued those rope on the top for reinforcement. Then I'm going to take more twine and tie it off on the side. We're just going to make a simple hanger for the top of this just by knotting that off on both sides of the driftwood. So now we have the structure done of this wind chime. So now we can start adding all of the sea glass. And that is kind of the colors that I have it set up. I kind of thought that made it look like an ombre, but you know, using supplies from the Dollar Tree. Now this sea glass from the Dollar Tree is actually pretty good um, compared to some that I've bought at Bell's. Um, it's, theirs kind of looks like it's just painted. Um, this is actually really pretty. So I thought I would do like one row of green, a couple rows of blue and then fade out into the white. And I really like that color scheme together. I don't always use the green ones, but I wanted a little bit of variety in color on these. And they're kind of flat. I'm trying to pick out some of the super flat ones and I'm just doing a line of hot glue on the back and then just laying that directly on the twine, trying to secure those to it. And again, I'm only gonna do one row of the green here on the top. So every single one is gonna get one of the greens. And then we can start building the blues going down the wind chime the same way. I'm not really measuring or anything. I am just kind of seeing what looks good and doing one row of blue. And these are all different shapes and sizes, but that kind of adds to the appeal but they all seem to have a pretty flat side, which is great for me to be able to hot glue that down. So let's do another row of blue, since that's my favorite one, the light blue. And I am working on a silicone mat, so that's one reason why I'm gluing it like this. It's not gonna stick to that or anything like that. No big deal, but if you're not on a silicone mat, you might wanna flip that and be gluing the twine to the top. Okay, now I think we'll switch to white. We only have one row left for the ends. So we better get all three colors on the end. So I do one row of the white sea glass here. And then again, some of these are longer than the sides. So um, we'll be able to keep building. And I'm gonna stick with that white color. I can do um, a couple more on the middle one, but only like one more on these on the sides just until it's completely finished and it does kind of look like an ombre effect going down it even though they are kind of different colors this was so easy to put together and it's so beautiful again i can't wait to see how this looks out in the sunshine and i'm hoping that the hot glue is like stays stuck I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit here, any of the hot glue that kind of seeped along the edges. But otherwise, this little wind chime is ready to go. I can't wait to kind of hear what this one sounds like. And here it is hanging. Again, you could totally hang this one as a wall hanging in your home. It'd be great for coastal decor. Or you could use it as a wind chime outside. It's so pretty. I love it. And I kind of wanted to show you what these look like just under the light in my dining room. Kind of try to give you some kind of idea of what these are going to look like in the sunshine outside. I think they're going to glisten in the sun. And again with this one, it has held up well. It's still going strong a year later. I didn't have to use any other kind of way to attach it by tying them on or anything like that. And my store is just restocked the sea glass, so lots to choose from. Okay, I told you we were gonna use the Capiz shells again that we got on Amazon. 
And I thought we'd make a really cool wind chime with these. Again, they sound beautiful when they clink up against each other. And I kind of want to do like a rather big project with these. So I'm just going to start laying them out um, in um, kind of a pattern to kind of see what I want to do. I think I want to kind of do what I did with the sea glass where I have like five different rows and some of them longer. And I thought this beach sign from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree would be perfect because it's got five letters that we could tie these to, five rows, and longest in the middle, shortest on the sides. Now, this is the twist. I thought we could try to dye these. So I have a cup of warm water and I added four teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. You can use white vinegar. I just didn't have any. And we're going to dye these just like you would dye like Easter eggs. So I have some food coloring that I use for my crafting. And I'm going to do a combination of blue food coloring and green. Maybe a little bit more blue than green. What I want is that minty green light blue color that looks so coastal. And so I add a good amount because I want to dye these. I've heard that you can dye these kind of like you dye like Easter eggs. So, hey, we are going to give it a try. I think they'd be pretty white too, but I think they'd be even more stunning blue. So I put those all in there and then it's just kind of a waiting game. Um, I did check them after 15 minutes. They were not blue enough. So I gave them like between 30 and 45 minutes. I went ahead and crafted something else. And now I think they're ready to go. So I'm just going to lay out some paper towels because this is going to be kind of messy. And I'm using like a plastic fork to try to prevent my fingers from turning blue. <laughs> it's kind of inevitable to touch some of them though. But what I'm doing is trying to kind of put them one by one on the paper towel. Um, they did kind of have like a bowl, a slight bowl shape. So I was trying to like flip them over if I could to try to get any of the excess dye off. But just working one by one and you can already kind of tell that it was successful and they did take the dye. I didn't know if food coloring would work for this, um, but I was pleasantly surprised. Kind of like just dyeing Easter eggs. And I'm just fishing around in there. I dyed exactly how many of them I needed. And here they all are. Now, they say to like let these sit a couple hours to dry, but I didn't have that kind of time. We are crafting here. So I'm going to hurry mine along. Um, and how I did it was I'm just kind of dipping out like the excess dye that's kind of sitting on the top of them and using my trusty heat gun to start the drying process. If you notice, I have a new heat gun. My other one was such a hot mess that I got this newer one from Amazon. And um, I don't think my old one was available anymore. And it is doing a great job. So then I'm gonna go through and flip them and try to dry the back of them. Because again, I really wanna speed this process up so we can start stringing these along. And I think they're pretty dry. So I'm going to just start putting these all on my mat and look how beautiful they turned out. They turned out even better than I thought they would. And I think these are going to look so beautiful out in the sunshine. So I'm just using a paper towel if there's any dots of dye water that's still on it. They're kind of evident just to make sure everything's dry. And we can start stringing all of these capi shells together for another beautiful coastal wind chime. And again, I wanted to do five rows, one for each letter of beach, and I think we can just tie them on there. Now, the holes um, in them, again, are really tiny, so we are going to use fishing line for this project. And I'm just going to start spacing them out like we had before we dyed them. I love them blue. I might have to dye more of this color in our little pattern that we had before. 
And I think that beach sign is going to work really great as a topper for that. It's going to provide a little bit of decoration. I don't need to do anything to it. It's got a great color. And I think we can start stringing this. I was thinking that if I strung some wood beads in between each one, that way I could just string straight through them. I wouldn't have to tie any knots to keep them in place that the wood beads would space them out. And I have some white painted beads from the Dollar Tree. Um, I think they just kind of came in a variety pack. I have quite a few of them there. I know you can buy just white ones too. And so I just double knot one of the strings here that's gonna be long enough to go up the five that I have laid out here on the side, double knotting it to secure it, and then just stringing um, a Dollar Tree wood bead on there and then going and stringing the next capiche shell. So again, this is a little bit of a time consuming process, but turned out absolutely beautiful. And I really think this one will hold up outside because the fishing line is tied everywhere. So I think it's gonna be nice and secure. So I'm just gonna keep it those two colors, the beautiful light blue and the white, and we can just keep stringing the capi shells. There is like a little area at the bottom of each one of those cursive letters that I think is gonna provide a good spot for me to tie that fishing line on. So I go right through the bee like that. And then we'll just double tie it up here to secure it to our wood sign. You could also use the rope words that are on wood signs from the Dollar Tree for this. That would be really cute too. They also have some of these wood words all the time. I think they have some that say like relax, stuff like that. That would totally, be, totally give you a beachy vibe as well. So we are gonna start stringing the other side here. And we're gonna speed this up a little bit because we got lots of stringing to do. But basically just a capi shell, a white bead, and then the next one all the way up. This one was a little trickier to tie on the H because it wasn't like a closed letter, but I do reinforce that a little bit here towards the end to make sure that that one stays in place too. So I'm gonna cut off some more fishing line. I didn't think I had any fishing line and I'm using this fishing line off of uh, one of my husband's reels that he was totally not using. <laughs> Nobody tell him, okay? And again, this row is gonna be one longer. And so just one more cat pea shell, one more wood bead. And I'm glad I decided to add the wood beads because otherwise I think I probably would have had to tie the cat pea shells where um, each place to keep them in place. But now I don't really have to do that because I have the spacing there from those. And we're going to tie this row off on the letter E. And I do kind of like the fishing line because of course you can't see it. And now we're gonna tie off the bottom one and start stringing this one over here as well. I really hope you're enjoying all of these coastal and beach DIYs. Don't forget to like this video, it helps the algorithm. And comment your favorite wind chime today below. Um, I always like to find out what your all's favorites are and it helps me to know what kind of content you like. And don't forget to subscribe, it was really exciting. We not only hit 15,000 subscribers, we hit 16,000 subscribers. So my channel is doing really good right now. And so I'm super happy about that. And I wanted to thank you all for being here and watching my videos. So the one in the middle was the longest one of all. And then we're just gonna string that one around the A. I like that there was an odd number. I could kind of do that cool pattern. And I think five was the perfect number. It just happened to be how many letters were in beach. Now it needs a hanger. So we're just gonna flip it over. And that's kind of a nice sturdy wood sign. So I think um, it's gonna be easy to hang. And I did staple that one there on the end just because don't want that falling off in any kind of weather. We get some wild weather outside here in Florida. And I just tie a knot in a piece of Dollar Tree twine 
And I'm just going to staple that to the back of this, making an easy little twine hanger. Something that I can hang. My floor to room has like, has a ceiling that has like open rafters. And so that's where I like to hang all of my wind chimes. And you know, I had already made one this year, so I'm going to have lots of beautiful additions. I can't wait to see how it looks out there. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so beautiful. And I can't wait to see how beautiful these dyed capi shells look in the sunshine. I'm so glad I decided to try to color them. Now the dyeing turned out temporarily, but I found that after a month or so, hanging in the sunshine, they faded. So I don't know if like the dishwasher Mod Podge and food coloring combination might work better on those. I'm not sure. Okay. Next, a uh, wind chime. Um, these are wood slices from the Dollar Tree. Um, they have circles, they have like wedges, and they have these sticks. I thought the sticks would be great for driftwood. And this is a shore living seashell hook um, that they had this year at Dollar Tree as well in the shore living line. I picked up a bunch of these, not necessarily to use as hooks, but I thought I could use the little wood pieces on there. And I think this is going to make a really cute topper for a wind chime. I just have to remove the screws on the back and just take that little hook off. I thought those little sticks would be perfect driftwood and we can make a driftwood wind chime. I've seen like driftwood sticks that are about that size. So I think we can kind of crisscross those and then combine them with some of those Dollar Tree Shore Living Starfish and make a really cool one of a kind display. Now, lots of drilling involved in this project. So you're gonna have to bring out the drill. Um, I do have some wood there on my silicone mat so I don't be drilling any holes in it. But this is probably the most tedious part of this one was just drilling holes. My first one was totally not in the center. So try to get the center. I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, obviously. But this part's a little te tedious. So I'm just going to do um, like six of them or so to get started. And then we can drill more as needed. So I'm going to cut off a long piece of twine. And then we're gonna start with this. I'm gonna string two pieces of the, like, I'm gonna call them driftwood. They kind of look like driftwood on there. And it's a little easier to string if you put a little hot glue on the tip and kind of mold that into kind of like a needle shape. And I wanna do like two like crisscross like that. And that is gonna be the very bottom. So kind of seeing how long I wanna make this. And I just tie a knot underneath one of those sticks to make the bottom of the wind chime. And we're just gonna tie that off. Now you could dangle something down there if you wanted, but I'm gonna kind of use my like seashell at the top of this wind chime. And it's gonna be a fairly big one. I've got lots of those sticks, so we might as well use them all, right? And it's gonna be like a crisscross driftwood like that. Now that one that I have on top there is the one that I kind of um, drilled crooked, so <laughs> I don't think that one's gonna work. So we'll just pull that one off and keep stringing these. Now I was trying to figure out what kind of pattern I wanted to do on these. I thought we could do like driftwood, we could do starfish, and then I thought wood beads would be really good on this one as well. And I have tons of wood beads from the Dollar Tree. Um, I buy these by the bags in the Crafter Square. And I thought this beautiful blue color would look great. So I'm going to start with like a large blue bead on top of two like crisscrossed pieces of driftwood. And then we can just keep building. So the wood beads are going to kind of be a spacer. Now these starfish from the Dollar Tree are made out of plastic and they were really easy to drill too. So I'm just going to drill a hole in them as well and string them down along where all the rays kind of stick out on the sides, kind of giving you that cool little effect. And again, I want to use a wood bead as a spacer. This time I'm going to switch to a smaller one. I didn't really count how many of those I had, and I don't have enough big ones to build the whole thing, but I had enough smaller ones, so it's going to work out. So I did two more pieces of driftwood and then another blue bead 
and then we're going to go back with driftwood, but it's time to drill some more. I did find it to be less tedious by just drilling a few at a time of those and the starfish. And when I started, I didn't know I was really going to be using all of these, but I kind of do all but a couple. But it can be a little tricky um, just drilling your hole on those just because it's kind of a round surface. And then we need more starfish as well. I'm going to alternate like one row with just a wood bead and one row with a starfish. So right now we have like wood bead, starfish, wood bead, driftwood, wood bead, driftwood. And so again, spacers. I'm going to go back with a, another wood bead, one of the larger ones, and then string on the starfish. And I did it the same way we did it before, and then doing a smaller blue bead on top. Then we can do more driftwood. I always do two pieces of those at a time. So you can get like that driftwood appearance by kind of making them go each way. And then I just keep stringing that same pattern. This one's just gonna have a bead. Then two more pieces of driftwood. So that's what we have so far. I tried to slow this video down a little bit. I know some of you guys were saying I was going a little too fast. So I tried to slow this down a little bit so you can get every step along the way. So I'm searching for more blue beads. And I think this was about when I realized that I probably didn't have any more of the large light blue beads, but I have plenty of the smaller ones. So the bottom half of this one's gonna have large beads and the top half is just gonna have small beads. It's just the way it's gonna be and it's gonna be fine, right? So I do wood beads, starfish, wood bead again. And then we need more driftwood. So again, just drilling holes in between and I think this is going to be really durable you can hang this indoor or outdoor you could even lay this like a would-be garland on your furniture like a little driftwood display that'd be cute too I'm going to hang mine outside I think it's going to be very durable out there because everything's kind of tied off with twine nothing's glued on or anything and we're going to need more starfish <laughs> that one really wanted to come with me I'm just trying to get to the center on those. And more driftwood. I told you this was going to be a fairly long one. I want this to be a really dangling down, like about the same length as some of my other wind chimes outside. More driftwood, more blue beads for spacers. And now it's time for another starfish. And I've never drilled holes in these starfishes before, but they were really easy to work with. And the white color I think is perfect. I think it's a nice contrast with the little doses of blue with those light blue beads. So that's what we have so far. When I go back to hang them at the end, I'll make sure that like my driftwood are going like opposite directions, kind of makes them look a little bit better. But let's go ahead and drill some more uh, driftwood sticks. And these are really cute. At first, I could only find these at like a larger Dollar Tree, these wood pieces um, in another town. But now my larger Dollar Tree in town has them as well. And actually, one of my smaller ones, I think, had them too. They are great. I picked up lots of the sticks, the circles, and like the wedge piece. I think they're called wedges. And I just keep repeating that pant pattern. And we have these sticks, so we might as well use them, right? So we're gonna keep drilling and keep building this upward. And I love how it turned out. I know it's not really driftwood, but it definitely gives you that feel. And no cutting involved. So I think one more starfish, another row of driftwood. And I think that's about it. Now we can um, attach the hanger to the top. So hang on, let me clean up my mess. And this is what it looks like so far with all of the driftwood and starfish going all the way down. 
just kind of making sure that it is fairly tight down there. And then I'm going to tie a knot in the twine above the would-be, double knotting that to kind of keep that in place. So they all stay tight. And then th we have that groove on the back of this where the hook um, went into the side. So I made the perfect groove to hot glue the twine to this. And I think this is going to be a really cute little piece of decor at the top of this wind chime. And then I have enough of that twine left that I can tie it. I was trying to decide where to tie it. I think I'm going to tie it here at the top. And it's going to make a nice little hanger to hang this. So the only thing I glued on this was that seashell, but again, pretty secure. You could always use a staple gun there as well if you wanted to make that a little bit sturdier. But this is how it turned out. I think these wind chimes are so fun. I love them. And this is how they turned out. I love the fun um, of the starfish being involved in the pattern. And I'm really glad I chose to use the little blue beads. I think they're so cute. Now, if you want these to really make some noise when you hang them up, I would suggest making more than one. That way they can kind of clunk up against each other because on their own, it's kind of decorative. Okay, for this DIY, we're going to make a wind chime to go outside. I got a couple of these wall charms from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree, the little anchor and the sailboat, and then some of these really cute little buoy wind chimes from the Dollar Tree. They have like two different kinds that I got, and we're going to use... I have a total of four, but we're going to use three of those. And we're going to put all these items together and we're going to make a really easy, cute wind chime that you can use outdoors. So I'm just going to reinforce the little wall charm a little bit with just a few staples. But I like the twine on there and I like the wood beads. The only thing I really need to remove is the tassel because it's kind of in the way. So I just cut that off. And then taking some twine, I'm just going to tie off on the bottom knot of that. So it's already got a hanger. That's going to be the very top of my wind chime. And then we're going to start building from there. So that seems pretty sturdy. Now, I'm just going to cut some off um, probably way longer than I need, but I want to have enough twine. And then we can start attaching these little buoy wind chimes. They're so cute. This one kind of looks like wood. They already have the little bell in there, so they're perfect. But on their own, they're very small for a wind chime. But if we put them all together like this, it's going to make a really nice one. So I just loop through the existing little hanger on there and tie it off to start my wind chime. I thought that might be hanging down a little too low, so I am going to simply just move that up a little bit and tie that off again. I want these to be hanging kind of like off to the side, kind of like buoys would be hanging together. And so that one I'm going to just kind of do off to that side. I'm going to alternate colors now with the white and blue one that also says beach on it. Just looping through its hanger and tying it off. I want them to not like bang up against each other because that does not make a very nice sound. So I want there to be enough room so they won't necessarily do that, but not too much room that's going to make it really long. So I'm just going to tie it off about where I want it. I thought about tying them directly under each other, but I kind of like the looks of them going off to the sides like this. So we're going to switch back to that wood one that we did first and tie off another wind chime. Trying to get it about equal distance underneath that bell that we did the first one. This was so easy to put together and it looks so cute on my porch. Now, I was thinking about making it longer, but I thought it would be too long. So that is going to be the final bell. And then the we're going to cut the twine off and we're going to use the other little wall charm um, to be like, I don't know what that part's called on the wind chime. That makes it ring. <laughs> so I use the hanger on the little anchor and I tie it off just by t knotting that around the little bell. 
that's inside that wind chime. And that way, when the wind blows that, it's going to make that bell ring. And then those are going to make the other bells ring. Now, I have not seen these little buoy bells this year. So I don't know if they didn't bring them back. Have you guys seen these in your store? I thought I would still include the wind chime because it turned out super cute. And you might be able to use like an upside down pot for the uh, buoy. Um, just painting it would be a fun idea. But they were super cute. So I don't know why they wouldn't have brought them back. They were sure living, but they well, I've only seen them last year. Now, let me show you how they all look. So I have all of my new wind chimes hanging on this wall up against my curtains. Once we get to the corner here on the top of my Florida room, um, we're going to start with the ones that I did last year with like the little anchor one I have in the corner. And again, I just have them directly hanging from the beams. And I was able to do this entire long wall of my Florida room as well. Um, so like the seashell one, um, trying to work around my driftwood light fixture there. And this one was actually a gift from one of my friends. We have like the sea glass one, the capi shells, as you can see, they faded the driftwood one, and then a little sea turtle one that I already kind of had over in the corner. Okay, you've made it all the way to the final reveal for all 12 of the coastal wind chimes that we DIY'd today. Be sure to write in the comments down below which one of the wind chimes was your very favorite or which one you're going to try to make. And if you haven't liked the video yet, please like it and don't forget to subscribe. Enjoy the final reveal. Too big. Can I 
get some comfort, please. I guess I should have been honest. A break to my heart. It's weighing me down, baby. I'm like a river that's overflowed. The sooner you know it, the less do we hurt. Let me speak the truth. I know you don't wanna face it. You think it's too late, but I can see past the rain. Won't you lay it on me? Turn the page and burn it. Let's make up. I wanted to give a huge thank you to you for making it to the end of today's video and I also want to give a big thank you to all of my crafty beach bum members for helping to support my channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner and Sandy C. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you so much. If you would like to become a Crafty Beach Fun member, all you have to do is hit the join button under today's video. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and you can cancel anytime. It's only $4.99 a month and I'd really appreciate it. Okay, if you'd like more Dollar Tree Beach DIYs, check out this video right here. Until next time, happy crafting.